What's up class? It's your teacher, option one. This week's class material was My Night Job. This game was released on May 17th earlier this year by Bit Composer Games. It was produced by a pair of Brazilian developers and it's billed as an arcade style hardcore beat em up with beautiful pixel art taking place in a multi tiered 2D mansion full of 11 different types of zombies, monsters, and other references to horror movies. My night job caught my eye a while back. The first reason is obviously the beautiful pixel art. Second of all, I love great beat-em-ups. Third of all, it had an air of quality and ingenuity. I only recently picked it up due to an excellent 50% off sale, and I've been playing it a little bit lately, so I decided to use it for this week's classes. What My Night Job really is, basically, it's not as much of an arcade beat-em-up as it is a mansion sim. Mansion Sim revolves more around keeping track of what's going on in each room of a mansion as opposed to going from level to level, beating up waves of enemies, finishing with a boss. A Mansion Sim is based more around movement, timing, clearing rooms as fast as possible, keeping track of all rooms, while at the same time in my night job, finding survivors in those rooms, taking them to rescue helicopters, and managing your available weapons at any given time, which some of them don't respawn, others take longer to respawn, and some of them are just not as good as others. Some weapons can even be trapped. I think in a way, being billed as an old school beat-em-up really doesn't do it justice and maybe would give a lot of people wrong expectations. It's really not a beat-em-up. In fact, the actual arcade action is very shallow. It really consists of either an attack or a jump attack. Jump attacks take off less stamina from your weapon, which is another form of management you have to watch out for, or a ground attack clears away a group of enemies at once, but takes a large amount of stamina away from your weapon. There's no direct score in my night job other than money, which you get on a multiplier of how often you kill enemies. Basically, your object is to run around the house as fast as you can, kill as many things as you can, while preventing the rooms from getting full of zombies and rescuing hostages along the way. There's a few random mechanics thrown in there. When you rescue a hostage, you have a random chance of dropping a gun, more money, or health pack. There are power-ups that can appear randomly, as well as they don't always activate when you try to pick them up. There's a few major complaints that I had with the game, and I think there's a few major complaints that everyone had with the game, and that mostly stem from the low replayability. You only have the one mansion. The object of each playthrough is to rescue 100 hostages. Unfortunately, once you've done that, as difficult as it may be, there's not really much else to do in the game. There are some secret elements, some kind of Easter egg mechanics you can find that I won't really go into. For the most part, once you've played this once, you've seen more or less what the game has to offer. It really depends on how fun you find it running around from room to room attacking zombies. For the record, I found it pretty fun. It wasn't consistently fun, and I think in a lot of ways I didn't feel compelled to continue playing after a particularly long run, but more often than not I enjoyed my nut job. There's something about it that I haven't seen in a long time, and that's simply a very high difficulty curve. This is not an easy game. And not only is it not an easy game, because of the random nature of zombie spawns, one run you could be rolling through rooms, keeping everything together, rescuing tons of hostages. The next run, you could be struggling just to get a few hostages while you're getting overwhelmed with zombies. And that's actually kind of cool. Part of what makes the game fun is the challenge. See, how far can I take it? How far can I get this time? If you're a higher level player and you have the management sim parts down, your objective is obviously to get the highest score possible. The further in you go, the more difficult it gets, but also the more points you can get. In that way, it does recreate classic arcade score-based games, and that's very enjoyable. There is something to be said for challenging games, and it does feel like Bit Composer did a good job of pulling everything together in a way that's just outside of reach. At times it feels obtainable, but at times it feels impossible. And that's just enough of a challenge to keep you interested, to keep you playing. However, this is something you're going to one and done. Maybe you'll come back in between games. Overall, I think My Night Job is definitely an interesting game. I'm more excited to see what's coming from these devs in the future than I am excited about My Night Job. But I will say, it was pleasantly surprising. One thing I would say though, at a $7.99 price point, it's a little bit difficult to recommend. $7.99 is just a hair above what I think it's worth. This is not a kind of game you're going to play for 20 or 25 hours, this is a game you're going to play between 5 and 10 hours. After that, you've either won, given up trying to win, or finished getting the trophies you feel like you've wanted to get. 
I would like to see it more at a $4.99. I think that would be a much more reasonable price point. I picked it up at $3.99 on sale and I feel that was incredibly reasonable. That was my quick look at my night job. Definitely worth a shot, especially if you love challenge. If you're a hardcore arcade style guy, you enjoy getting the highest score, then this is definitely a game for you. If you're a little more casual and you're not interested in solo grind sessions that may seem just out of reach and difficulty, this may not be for you. We're going to have a few classes this week from my night job. It's definitely given me a lot of topics to talk about. So look forward to the upcoming videos. Thanks a lot, guys.